Hello, my lovely friend, and welcome to the Soul Care Intuitive Podcast. I'm your host, Melinda Grubbs, and in this podcast, we're going to show you that you're not just ordinary, you're extraordinary. I never had any spiritual experiences as a child, and I did not discover my own psychic abilities until my late 30s. I love to share all that I have learned to show you that we all already have these skills inside of us, just screaming to be let loose. So if you're ready to awaken your soul, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Hello, my lovely friend. Thank you for tuning in to the Soul Care Intuitive podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Today we have a very special guest and dear friend of mine, Valerie. She is an intuitive, a spiritual coach, a Reiki practitioner, and so many other amazing things. She does a three-month coaching program, which I took last year, and I have seen so many wonderful changes in my life since then in my business, and I just really respect and love Val so much, and I'm so excited that she is my first guest on the podcast. Without further ado, let's get into the interview, the conversation with Val. Hello, and I'm so excited for this episode today. I have my good friend Val here with us, and she is a spiritual mentor, a Reiki teacher, and so much more. Val, I'm so excited to have you here today. Can you introduce yourself? Tell us about yourself, your business, and how you came to be what you are today. Sure. Thanks so much for having me, Mel. It's an honor, a blessing to be here. Um, Yeah. So I started my journey um, several years ago. Um, I have always been um, a person that would like receive healing from other people. Um, And then I became a health coach um, after my, so I developed anxiety um, postpartum over 20 years ago really tried to manage it, tried to figure it out. It got me into a tailspin. I developed melanoma. So then I had to like really take care of my health. And that's where I became a health coach. And as I became a health coach, I realized like all of the stuff I had been doing previous to health coaching. And that's like eating healthy and taking my supplements. Before that, I was balancing energy, getting, you know, going to Reiki healers or going to acupuncture and was doing all this energy healing, but I wasn't really taking care of my body. Right. Um, and I wasn't really taking care of my mind. I was expecting these people to heal me, right? Like go to acupuncture. I'll be healed. I'll be cured. Uh, right. It's like not setting somebody outside of you to heal you instead of yourself. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And it had this misconception that I just would go to these places and it would be healed. And oh, yes. so I, I kind of, figured on my journey when I became a health coach, I was like, okay, to really like understand our own selves, like we have to work body, mind, soul. And so that's kind of the essence of my business is that I work with body, mind, and soul. And so then I became a Reiki practitioner so that I could utilize that in my practice. And I also studied hypnotherapy and NLP so that I could work with the subconscious mind as well. Um, So within my practice, I work with like women that are struggling with anxiety, which is probably like 99.9% of the women. Yes. (laughs) Yes. You know, we're moms, you have to pay bills, you have to go to work. There's so many things that women have piled on top of them. So much. And so that's where I kind of really like hone in my, my craft is working with women who have really suffered with anxiety and I work with the body, mind, spirit, so we can have it all encompass. Um, so my spiritual journey really started then and, um, and be being a Reiki practitioner is what kind of opened the gateway for me is what they say. So That's amazing. Now, have you, have you had any psychic or spiritual experiences as a young child or maybe an adolescent, or did you just kind of step into it as you were learning Reiki and learning your mind body wellness? Yeah, good question. So I was trying to remember that, like, okay, how far back does this go? And I, I'm pretty sure I did have some experiences as a young child. I just don't remember them all, but I do remember as a teen, I really was like noticing that I could read people's energy and as an empath, that's kind of what we do anyways. But like, it was a little bit deeper where I was like, no, I know how you're feeling without you telling me, like I could really kind of pick up on stuff. And, and of course, as a teen, we get into, you know, playing with Ouija boards, 
Yes. Just once. Just once. <laughs> but, <laughs> Going you know, to the sleepovers the in the 80s rock. Right, right. All those sleepovers and like, you know, light as a feather, stiff as a board. We did all of that. But really, it's like, that was kind of a point too, where things were starting to open. And I didn't know it, but I was like, I felt connected to spirit and I felt connected to, um, I, I felt like I could communicate in that way. Right. Um, but then comes motherhood, everything just yes. shut down and you just career motherhood, just keep going. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, for me, it didn't really like my psychic abilities didn't open up until I started Reiki, um, which I think is super common for most people is that it's kind of like that you know, bulb that turns on and goes, okay, it's there. Um, because as you know, as a Reiki practitioner too, that this is once we, we have these gifts all the time, we've had them since we were our born whole yes. our whole life. They just get pushed down and subdued. And so Reiki is just kind of like lighting the, lighting the, the, the match and just going, okay, here we go. Let's explode. Here you are. This is you. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite the it, it was quite the awakening during that yeah, time. That's very true. I had this really profound spiritual awakening where I was able to do a mediumship reading literally out of thin air out of nowhere. But then after I started researching spirituality and I learned about Reiki, which I was so heavenly drawn to, when I started getting the attunements, a lot of more psychic gifts opened up for me. So I know I had that same experience where when I yeah. started taking Reiki, I could see energy, I could feel energy more. So a lot of people have that same experience. I want to ask you, what does your family do? Do they support you? How are they connected in your journey of spirituality? Yeah, my family's super open, um, luckily. And, um, you know, I my, I think that some of my family members are still like, okay, like, you know, they're, they're with me and they support me, but you know, I'll tell them psychic stuff that happens and they'll be like, okay. You know, yeah. um, <laughs> yes. I, I still like, I blow my husband away whenever I come on a session. I'm like, oh my gosh, just this happened. And he's like, how do you know this? And like, I did it just I don't happens. know. It's it just, just happens, you know, mm -hmm. like I, but he loves, he loves hearing the stories because he thinks it's just so cool. Um, so yeah, they're very supportive and see it as a gift and, you know, really it is a part of, again, everybody has it, but really it is, um, very thick within my lineage as well. Like my sister's super intuitive, psychic, witchy, she calls herself and, um, you know, my aunt. And so it, like, it really does go down the family line too. Of like, yeah, we've, we've always been there. We just have never really opened it. Right? Explored so. it or opened it. Yes. Mm -hmm. My lineage starts with me. <laughs> Nobody in my family is psychic. Nobody in my family does like mediumship work. And I remember when I first came out, it was very um, awkward to say the least. Uh, yeah. I know when I came out to my friends, it, it was really scary. I was really scared to say anything to my friends that I've known my whole life. And here I am pushing 40 and all of a sudden I'm a psychic medium. And I did not get a good response out of like maybe 400 people that I had on Facebook at the time, two people said anything to me at all. And it was, it was really hard when I came out first because nobody in my family knew what it was. Nobody experienced it. My friends were not supportive whatsoever. But yeah. over the last four years that I've been developing and healing and you know learning about myself, I've realized that the power comes from within and your love and your acceptance comes from within. And so if there's any listeners here who don't have a beautiful family like Val who supports them. Yeah. It's okay. Like we want you to keep moving forward and keep going. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And even for me with like the acceptance and love I had around me, um, I, I didn't use the word psychic until last year and wow. I've been doing this for seven years, you yes. know? So it's like, I, I felt really, I felt like psychic and mediumship had a stigma and it, and it still does. I agree. Right? I agree. And so I didn't want people to come to me because my skills weren't at the level of what somebody might perceive as a psychic or medium from TV right. shows. And so oh, I didn't yes. want them to come to me and say, tell me what my, my, you know, past loved one wants me to hear right now. And it's like, that's not 
who I am, right? Or right, tell exactly. me what lottery, what lottery numbers to play. Like, that's not me. Like, I didn't want to give this perception of psychic. So I kept it just intuitive readings and I'm an intuitive empathic soul. Um, so it was really like finding that embrace and that empowerment yeah. of like, no, I, I am a psychic. Like the stuff I'm doing is psychic work. Like it's not what the typical right tv hollywood show is but it's still a form of psychic ability so yes and i think that's one thing that so many people need to understand too is just like that there is a rainbow there isn't just one way to be psychic there's just so Absolutely. many ways to do it oh, for and sure. we need to be open to that as well and then understand that um yeah. and then embrace that yeah. yeah, I like to teach my students that everybody's unique and your personality, your life, your upbringing, your challenges, they're going to make you unique and special in your gifts. And your gifts are not going to look like the next person. You still have them. Everybody has them. But the way you receive them, perceive them or understand them is going to be different. And you're still psychic. You're still intuitive. But I think a lot of people put a really big label on the word psychic or the word medium. And yeah. like you said, it's a stigmatism that people want to shy away from instead of just accepting them as gifts we innately already have. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's really important for us to just understand. I think as we hone into those gifts is that like there's embrace it and be okay with, even if your psychic isn't, you know, a huge psychic, it doesn't mean that you're less than, right? You yes, still have exactly. the ability. So exactly. Yeah. Now, Super Val, fun. I want to talk about your three month coaching program. I took your program last year and it was so amazing and so life changing. How did you get into becoming a spiritual coach, a wellness coach? What, what brought you into that field? Yeah. So I'm um, kind of, like I said, previous, it was really like my, my wake up call was was when I got cancer. Cause that's where it was like, okay, full stop. Yeah. Yeah. I was in my biggest depression ever. I developed agoraphobia. I couldn't leave my house. Wow. Like I, I, it was bad. And, um, and I was like, okay, well, either you're going to be institutionalized, you're going right. to be heavily medicated, or you need to figure your shit out. Exactly. <laughs> so then I did the work and I did a little bit of research. Um, I felt so alone though in the process. Oh yeah. And that's one space where I just knew that I didn't want other people to feel that alone. Mm -hmm. Um, and so mm -hmm. I started looking into, okay, meditation, how does that work? And so I really kind of like dabbled into understanding mindfulness and meditation and studied all of that really intensely and then got into health coaching because I knew I needed to incorporate my whole body into the healing because I had had cancer. So I was like, well, there's a reason. Right. Then as I've learned, right, like anxiety is going to affect my health. So super important to understand your health oh, when you yes. have anxiety. Um, so all of those things just kind of pieced together. And I was doing a lot of subconscious reprogramming. I was doing a lot of mindfulness, meditation, spiritual work, and I was doing a lot of healing through food um, and supplements. And so then I was like, okay, so this is, this is what I need to do. I need to bring this to everybody and let them know that this is an alternative way to really kind of yeah. come in with yourself and, and do some deeper healing. Um, so that's how my three month program kind of developed was knowing that we had to incorporate body, mind, soul for homeostasis. Um, and so that's my goal is to give my clients the tools to feel empowered as they are on their healing journey. Cause it doesn't end there, right? It doesn't oh, end yes, at, absolutely. at one and done. Um, it's a continuation. We're here to heal and that's what we're here to do. Um, and so I just want to give you all the proper tools so that you can continue on this journey and feel empowered as you continue going. So now you mentioned earlier hypnotherapy. And when I did my three month coaching program with you, you used hypnotherapy and timeline therapy. Can you explain yeah. what that is and how you got into that? Sure. Yeah. So I've been doing self hypnosis for gosh, probably like 10 or 15 years now. Um, and I had the opportunity to become board certified as a hypnotherapist um, two amazing. years ago now, this fall. And um, it's just kind of one of my favorite ways to work with the subconscious um, because it really 
implants your ideas of what you yes. truly want and helps us change and rewire those neurons. Um, so yeah, with my clients, we'll do hypnotherapy based on whatever your goals are, right? So if it's weight loss, we'll do a hypnotherapy for that. If it's just confidence building within your business, right. we're going to do something around that, right? Um, That's what I did and it was amazing. It was, it really shifted. And so like, we, lo I love being able to like get that into the, the mix and the timeline therapy is where we, again, and work with the subconscious. Um, and so it's, it's where we're, we're working throughout your timeline, which would be past life or generational. And we're clearing any living beliefs or emotions, right. anything that's keeping you kind of stuck. Um, now I've kind of created my own little timeline healing where we're going to do deeper, I do deeper soul work. And so then we work with the past lives and the generational lives and we do soul retrievals and soul healings and wow. really have a subconscious connection to the soul um, because that, that helps us break any soul wounds or karmic wounds that might be lingering as well. So oh, wow. kind of fun your clients are stuff. so lucky to have you. you your program yeah. is so amazing. And I know it changed my life. Like here I am on a podcast. I never thought I would ever be doing a podcast. And here I am. And it's it's thanks to you and the work that you helped me do. Um, I want to go back to the limiting beliefs that you mentioned. I think a lot of us are just bogged down with limiting beliefs. Do you have any suggestions for the listeners about how they can work on their limiting beliefs, maybe get past some of them or figure out what they even are? Yeah, I think that's a really great question. So, yeah, I think we get kind of stuck. Like I, the biggest one I always hear from clients is like not feeling like they're enough, right? Yes. Just kind of feeling like they've been told over and over in their lives or they've been proven in certain ways, like I'm not enough, right? I'm not good enough. I can't be enough. I'm not enough. And that limits us in our growth as humans, as far as, yes. you know, career or whatever it might be relationships. Um, so when we're looking at those limiting beliefs, I want you to like, take it just a second and realize like, where did this come from? You know, mm -hmm. is, is that statement true? Does it hold truth? Do you really think that you are not enough or is this a subconscious belief? And then when you kind of understand where this is coming from, um, one thing you can also do is like some tapping around it. So you can do yes. EFT yes. and EFT just do tapping, like, a, yep, and just do some tapping around. I am enough. I am powerful, you know, come up with some beautiful statements to just kind of help clear that um, out of the system as well, because you are enough. We are all enough. So um, that is absolutely one way to do it. Just being recon recognizing where it's coming from and what's happening. And then maybe looking at what are the positives. So writing down some positive opposites of what that would be. Awesome. Well, Valerie, yeah. thank you so much for being on my podcast. I want you to share your website. How can my listeners access you and all of the amazing things you have to bring to the world? How can they find you? Sure. Thanks, Mel. Um, yep, they can just go to mindfulwellness.me. That's my website. Um, and you'll find all the information there. You can look for, I've got um, once a month, I do free Reiki. So you can hop on my Zoom and do a free Reiki healing with me if you want to wow, get to know me a bit. It's amazing. Um, and yeah, just hop on, ask questions and I'll be there. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show, Val. I'm so excited to have you be my very first guest. And thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Mel. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Soul Care Intuitive Podcast. If you'd like more information about me, my services, or how to get in contact with me, everything will be down below in the show notes, or if you're listening and watching this on YouTube, it will be in the description. I will also include links to Val's amazing services. You absolutely have to check her out. Her work is really extraordinary, helping you release anxiety and stress and step into the next level of your life. Thank you again for listening to the podcast. I'll see you in the next one.